Hello. So today's episode is going to be a series of ponds we, we used to fish um, as kids and uh, it's going to wind up ending with a pretty, a really cool, like a caught out on a huge lake in a horrible storm type adventure. So. I hope you enjoyed this content. Thumbs up and like, comment and share. Um, subscribe if you already hadn't subscribed. That'd be cool. Um, and hit that notification uh, bell. So, we went fishing a lot. Um, I think I kind of have established that. Um, usually when we went fishing with Dad, it was on like a lake or um, like a river or or something fancy um or the quarry you know um but when we'd go fishing with our friends it would be at normally like a pond you know um almost everybody knows where where there's a good pond you know so um <clears throat> going all the way back to uh when we lived up here off the uh, that canal and river uh, behind that old railroad station down the hill um, there was like this black pond in the middle of the woods it was like very creepy dude very creepy but it was uh, it was close enough to the house to where dad would stock it with uh, fish that he caught from the from the river you know he'd bring them home and uh, put them in there or whatever um, and we would go down there and we would catch fish it was it was not that big of a uh, of a pond and you just had to cross like a little creek um, and go up a hill and it was right there man and uh, it was easy to just throw a, a can line in and, and pull out like some baby bass or some baby uh, bluefish or sunfish or, or whatever, you know. That pond had a lot of frog eggs in it, Like That is a, a memory I remember about that. It, it seemed to always have some frog eggs in it, and I mean a lot of frog eggs. You know, <clears throat> but uh, another one, uh, we would go up to uh, where we lived. There were um, several, like, large families with lots of kids. Uh, and one of them lived up the road, and uh, they had a pond. And I can I can't say their name, but we called it by their name. You know, the name of the family. That's what we called that pond. It was like uh, the Johnsons Pond. You know what I mean? But uh, <clears throat> we'd go there. That was a big pond to us as a kid, man. That might as well have been a lake. Um, it it was pretty big. Um, but uh, that was a uh, a learned experience right there because that was the first time uh, me and my oldest brother we were out there fishing off they had a dock <clears throat> and we're out there fishing and i'm using like live bait you know worm and stuff like that he's he's working some top water baits and uh, he was casting and he hooked me in the side of the head uh, full swing for his cast just tink you know and I mean it hurt it dug in dude and he wound up digging that out you know I don't think we did it quite right <laughs> you know but we get that out and I'm sitting there and I'm like you know I'm trying to bait up my line and all this and he goes to cast again and whoosh, tink he gets me in the arm dude and it was like nuts like I didn't even want to fish no more you know, we get that out of my arm. I was, I was like maybe nine or eight, you know. I mean, I was young. 
Uh, so, I mean, it hurt good, you know. Uh, but we get that out of my arm, and it's like, you know, don't cry, don't be a baby. So I, I didn't even want to cry about it, so I, I toughened up, you know. And I got my stuff, and I got off. I got off that dock, and I walked all the way around back over towards where their house was and fished from, uh, like, that common area, you know, away from the dock and away from, like, whew, away from uh, fishing hooks, you know. There was another pond we'd go to. Um, it was, uh, like, one of my dad's friends. <clears throat> Like I said, there were there were four of them, four of the main ones. They called themselves like the the four horsemen and stuff, you know, uh, nicknames. But they were they were in the fishing uh, big time, man. And uh, so one of them, when he bought his his land, he turned this little mud pond, and he cleaned it out and and backed it out and drained it and did all this stuff and prepped it and then refilled it. And, uh, he filled it with fish that he wanted, you know, and he made sure everything was right and they were fed and everything. And it had all these ecosystems going on with all these levels. And after years and years and years and years of this pond being like healthy like this, dude, you'd go over there and you'd start off, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd catch like, you'd put like corn on a hook, you know, and you'd catch like a brim. Or one of the uh, the prey fish, you know what I mean? And you'd get it out, it'd be like one or two inches, you know, and you'd switch out your hook and your all that, and you'd, you'd take another hook and you'd put that in the tail of that one, dude. You didn't need to really injure it or anything. You'd, you'd put your bobber maybe four feet up and you'd do a nice wide swing and you'd cast that, that live bait out there with that uh, bobber. You, you just sit and wait and um he had like you know when you showed up you would go basically to the the one side that was the the deep side that's where you sat and um went catfishing and like if you walked around further that would be like the uh the sports fishing side it was shallow and it had like spawning beds and like reeds and and uh uh lilies and all that and you could do some top water and action you know stuff like that um <clears throat> which it was fun he had huge bass in there don't get me don't get me wrong they were huge but the catfish were so <clears throat> anyway you'd set up man you got your bobbers out there you done caught your bait you, you switched up you got your bobbers out you're sitting there <clears throat> now if you're there during the daytime you get to witness your bobber just starts it doesn't you know plop plop down it just starts moving and as it's moving it's zigging back and forth like a z pattern and just slowly sinking going away from you you know like a like a real jaws moment but <clears throat> what has happened is the catfish done found it come by and scooped it up and you, you want to watch that bobber go down, man. And uh, you just give it line, you know. You never... We'd cast them out and we'd set them up on like a pole hook, you know. But we'd leave the, the bale open so that if something took it, it'd have line. And you just feed it line and let it go, let it go. And you'd wait a good uh, 10, maybe 20 seconds. And... Uh, <clears throat> Then you'd pop that bale and you'd set that hook, and uh, the fight was on, dude. And uh, normally everybody else would reel up, you know, unless they had one on too. But they would reel up so you could fight your fish. And uh, it would normally be <clears throat> a catfish anywhere from as long as your arm to as long as your uh, leg, if not bigger. Uh, they were a huge catfish, dude. In a really good fight. I mean, a really good fight. Uh, yeah. It was an honor to go fishing at his pond, man. And he'd come out there, dude. He looked like, uh, he looked like, uh, I don't mean to get religious or anything, but he, he looked like, you know, Jesus. He had the hair, the, the beard, and all that. 
um, and he'd come out there on his dock, dude, and he would he'd get up on the dock and he'd jump off into the pond and he'd swim out there underwater without coming up all the way out into the middle where he had built like this personal stand where he could stand up on it um, and it would look like he was standing on water when he got out up on it uh, it was right below the surface uh, so he'd swim out and jump up on it and stand there it was really cool he was a he was a very cool dude man uh, during the winter time <clears throat> This same dude would use like a garden hose and like where the pond was he had a hill up behind it and he'd go out there when it's snow and he'd build like a uh, a sled a sled run um, and he'd ice it down with the garden hose every night and he'd go out over the pond and it was a uh, it was usually one of the fastest sled runs in the valley dude I mean he he loved building his sled runs they were awesome that was another thing so uh, another pond this is going this is going way back to uh, to Kentucky when we were young young um, there was a pond we had to sneak to to get to and uh, it had these huge crappie in it, dude. Um, it was like the only, the only place in like that area you could catch crappie in a pond. Uh, and these crappie were from fingertip to elbow, dude. They were, I know we were like 10 to maybe 14. The oldest of us was 14, you know, and the youngest like 10 or 11. But they were, they were a good 12 inch maybe even 15 inch black crappie dude uh seriously they were they were they were huge uh black crappie <clears throat> and if the uh the farmer seen anybody out there in the field fishing he'd come out shooting now i know he'd probably shooting up in the air but we've been shot at a couple times because the fish in there was just so unreal uh you'd put a white jig on your uh on your uh, line and you just cast it out and almost every cast was a huge black crappie dude it was real fun i remember one time though he come out shooting it was like around sunset <clears throat> and um i actually called and verified this this memory with my brother who shared it and when we were running off dude i remember looking back at the pond and on the surface of the pond was like your classic, I know it's going to sound cheesy, but your classic uh, serpent with the, the back above the water, back above the water, and then the head sticking up. Um, we, we seen one of those out in this pond, and the one we seen couldn't have been no more than maybe eight, you know, five to eight feet long tops you know it wasn't some huge Loch Ness looking monster um, it was a it was a nesty looking thing but it was only like you know five to eight feet long and um, I remember seeing at least two distinct uh, arches underneath of this thing where like the arch was sticking up out of the water twice and then the head came up and out you know what i mean um and i i verified it with him you know just to make sure i was like dude do you remember and he was like yeah i remember that and i was like all right cool you know <clears throat> but um there was another time um uh, we were a little bit older you know this was just uh me and my dad and one of our good friends we would always hang out with uh don't want to use his name so i'm going to call him ted and uh his brother you know uh mike um <clears throat> and we decided because well we were over at at ted's place man and he he had this like old boat that he somehow got licensed and this boat was not even as big as like a twin sized mattress but it had like three foot sidewalls you know it, it was a deep 
uh, like four man boat but I, I mean it was not that long at all dude it was less than 10 feet long and um, he had this uh, like 10 horsepower mercury and we had been over there and we were messing with it and working on it and we had got it fired up and, and Ted was so worked up and you know we talked about it and talked about it and we were like dude we're gonna get this thing and we're gonna go fishing with it and we're like all right man you know and we we managed to get the trailer you know the wheels on the bearings all greased up they held air we got the trailer hooked up you know and we didn't want to go to like one of the main places because um we didn't have like certain things that you know you would need to go out on the water for a big you know main lake or anything you know um and this is back in the 90s man no cell phones no nothing like that no like weather channel even if there was we didn't have it you know we were just poor country folk folk that uh were happy we got a boat motor running and we had a boat that didn't leak fully uh to put it on you know and a trailer to haul it so <clears throat> the plan was we're going to get this we're going to get that we're going to camp out man it's going to be fun you know so we went to a uh, a lake we 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 never normally would go to because it would be uh in the opposite direction of more people but we figured if we went there, you know, we would have less of a chance of encountering uh, any kind of trouble for not having certain things we should, you know, because it was less populated. Um, so we loaded up, man. We got our rods. We got to camp and stuff. We got some stuff to drink and eat and all that stuff. And <clears throat> we get down there. We, you know, there there were other people at the boat ramp and they were just kind of like looking at us you know they had their big fancy you know bass masters or nitros or whatever you know and we had this like blue and white striped bathtub with this like motor that didn't even have a lid on it you know or a, a, a upper bezel you know covering it you know and we had like uh, gallon jugs for gas, holding the gas, you know. And but we had a boat, you know. We were happy. And we got that boat in the water, you know. And, and they parked uh, the trailer with the the really old van. We took the boat with like a it was like a '65 bug-eyed van, dude. Uh, but. So we parked our, our rusty trailer with the rusty van and <clears throat> we got in our like breaking down boat and we fired up that motor and yeah, we maybe were only doing five or 10 miles an hour, but it felt like we were doing a hundred miles an hour, dude. And we just out across this lake, dude, this lake is huge too. Um, but we went out across it and we went uh, like we didn't have no map or no gps or nothing dude and we just kept going and we wound up going down this fork and down that fork and then we pulled up into here and we found this cove where like nobody it looked like nobody been in ever you know what i mean and we found it it's like a outcropping of um uh like granite or something you know it was a really nice chunky earth outcropping of, of solid rock and if you think of it that they 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 dammed the river and flooded these valleys to make this lake then pretty much that outcropping of rock used to be like a, a cliff overhang of the valley you know what i mean <clears throat> so we pulled the boat up into this little cove with that outcropping you know and we get out and it was dude honestly it was beautiful it was perfect um and we pulled the boat we anchored it we got out our stuff set up camp dude we had a tent set up and everything and you know we're we're having fun we're kicking back relaxing we had fish it was like fish after fish after fish it was a really good fishing spot we we had so much food dude we we had cooked 
I don't know, maybe six or eight fish, and there were only four of us. And plus, we were drinking and having all kinds of fun, you know. So, um, the night just went on, and uh, we're having all of this fun, but like the woods started getting quiet, you know, and we were getting a little bit like even though we're having fun and we're catching fish and we're throwing them back in with the woods getting quiet when normally they should be so loud it's like deafening especially out there on the lake uh when it gets quiet on a lake it gets quiet dude because you can hear like uh, a branch break like a mile across the water you know what i mean so for it to be quiet if we're sitting up here on these rocks and the whole like it's quiet on the lake and like the only sound is like us fishing and talking uh, that means a lot of the lake is quiet and pretty much that entire cove that entire branch of the uh, of the lake had gone quiet this would have been like uh, midsummer you know uh, it was at least a half a moon, if not three quarters of a moon. It, it was a pretty bright night. Um, and, you know, it got all quiet. Next thing you knew, uh, you heard, like, an alpha coyote signal, you know, hunt is on. And you heard maybe five or ten dogs, you know, they picked up around them. Um, and it was, uh, it sounded like if we were in a u-shaped cove and we were on the one tip of the u they were on the other tip of the u so they would have had to run the entire shape of the u to come around to us you know what i mean and uh no sooner than they started like yipping and yapping and howling and barking man uh, to our like if we were looking straight that would have been straight across about four maybe six football fields uh, to this other side of the U, you know, and so to our left, um, up in the cove, like about the same distance, you know, that four to six football fields, um, 1,200 feet, you know, at least 1,200 feet is, uh, we heard like, it, it wasn't a dog, and it, it wasn't like, wasn't no it, it's like I've heard all kinds of different sounds in the woods man <clears throat> and this here sounded like something different it sounded like it was mad like really really mad dude and uh, it, it, it almost had a bark to it but it was more of just a, a roar you know and it roared and it roared and it roared and it was like the the dogs were barking and it roared at the dogs like it was upset that the dogs woke him up and like all of us we just went quiet dude and like dad was like put the fire out you know so we we started putting the fire out and like we had all this going on and that's when we realized what time it was you know and because uh no sooner than you heard the dogs barking and, and that thing roaring, uh, you started seeing lightning striking uh, off to the west. And that was at like quarter after uh, midnight is uh, when I remember looking at my watch. And um, so we got this roar going on. We got the, this coyote pack that got fired up. And no sooner than they fired up, this thing starts roaring at them. So they didn't really come at us. They kind of went up that ridge and whatever that thing was kind of went up that ridge too. So off to our like, if we were 12 o'clock looking at the coyotes and this thing was like um, 9 o'clock roaring initially. Now they're both meeting up at like 1030-ish, you know, off to our left um, and kind of straight ahead. Um you know kind of 10 maybe 11 ish um and um and about a quarter mile away up on that ridge 
and we done put the fire out and we done packed up camp we saw the storm come in and you know we're doing all this stuff we're throwing fish back you know and but we can't get the boat motors started <clears throat> and uh we we had been uh consuming some beverages and stuff so we wasn't quite of the clearest mindset and um the fear that the the roars and the barks had induced was really uh disorienting and uh, added an extra layer of confusion and haste um so it, it made it difficult to get packed up and everything but we did and like i said it was going on like quarter till one um and the storm is like the headwind is there like there we can still hear the barking and the roaring um and they've like climax like there is like the battle of uh the titans going on over here to our like 10 o'clock position you know but we can't get our boat motor started and the headwinds are making the like the huge lake the waves are getting choppier and taller you know and we get all loaded up made sure the fire was out finally got the boat going by like just before one ish let's say um and we get out there on the lake dude and we we didn't even that boat was so slow it took us so long just to get out of that cove um, that by the time we got out of that cove, the storm was on us like a Forrest Gump thing, dude. I mean, there was high winds, there was lightning everywhere, there was just dumping water. Uh, they, it got to the point where it was just like we had dumped out one of our tackle boxes and broke it in half. And me and, uh, Ted's brother Mike was sitting there like scooping out water from this sinking bed that we got this motor on that's not even strong enough to push us over the waves and we didn't even know where we were uh we got out there in the middle of that lake and we realized that we had no clue where to go we didn't let alone did we know which direction we were going to make sure to go towards something you know what i mean we were just like trying to get back towards land we were out there for like four hours dude the only way we eventually found out which direction a direction was was because the eastern horizon started you know there was light that way so we started going opposite of that in this storm the storm was still going on this entire time the repeat the process scooping out you know scooping out and i mean we we had that lieutenant dan moment where we were like you know what bring it on you know and i mean it was crazy and it was to the point to where we were going to run out of fuel um before we realized what direction was what and we started going that way and we got back to the dock and there was this uh, uh park ranger there like a game warden and he was so happy to see us dude he didn't even ask no questions he was just we were the only vehicle in that parking lot and uh i guess he had been sitting there all night you know wondering where we were what we were doing and he saw us coming in dude and he helped us get the boat out of the water and load up and i know he could tell you know what we were doing you know but he was just glad that we had survived and he didn't have to fill out or call anybody you know what i mean um, it was a hell of a fishing trip uh, it was a hell of a fishing trip and we got back and we loaded up and we got out of there and i mean he was all like what do you think that was you know uh, we all discussed you know what we thought it was and that was uh, <clears throat> That was, of course, after we had had several run-ins with what we called the uh, big black hairy thing, and uh, so that was that was when my dad explained to uh, Ted about like uh, our encounters with the big black hairy thing and how that possibly could have been one, but it sounded different. It sounded it sounded different. Um, 
but yeah there you go i hope you enjoyed this content thumbs up and like comment and share um subscribe if you already hadn't subscribed that'd be cool um and hit that notification uh bell so i'm working on getting patreon up and going and um i i want to say thank you to my patreon members um you guys are awesome <laughs> so thank you and this part is for my patreon members um, i appreciate you